Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Sri Gyan Manju Vidya Peet for the students of standard 10 in which we are learning the subject of English. Students, we had started with chapter number 7 of uh, the main book that is first flight. Name of the chapter is Glimpses of India. In the previous lecture, we started with the first part of uh, chapter number 7. As the name of the chapter goes, Glimpses of India, it shows us bird eye view or a simple understanding of a particular place or a region in India. Glimpses, that means there should be more than one region or place that is uh, told to us about. So, in the first part, we learned about uh, Goa. In that, a very beautiful picture of uh, any village of Goa, a normal, any small village of Goa was given to us, where we were uh, pictured a baker, which becomes a very essential part of the uh, village, the society in general, the culture, the custom, tradition, all of that regarding the baker is woven into the story and we are given a pen portrait of a baker in Goa. What is the importance of the baker? What it, what a baker, for the people, what a baker bears in their mind? And when these children, they grow up, they have that picture permanent in their mind, image. So, they readily try to show us the same picture and they're proud of their childhood, the memories of their childhood that is shown as a glimpse of India. So, in the first part, we learnt about a baker in Goa. Uh, now, second part, let us start with the second part today. Second part is about Kurg. It's written by Lokesh Brawl. Kurg, we have already studied in uh, chapter number 10 of uh, geography, that is social science, when we were learning agriculture and agricultural products of India. In that and in beverages, we learnt about coffee. Kurg happens to be one of the most important place for coffee growers. Coffee of Kurg is well known not only in India but all over the world. Uh, some special agricultural products, they are made special with the help of soil, climate, the hard work of the people. So, agricultural products of some areas become very popular, they become very famous, not only for their taste, their origin and their originality. It is all thanks to the soil that allows them to grow to become a good harvest. The people of that area will be quite happy, prosperous. That also has quite a lot of effect. They take care about the crops, etc. So Kurg area is situated in India and a glimpse of Kurg area is given to us by the author Lokesh Abral. So let's start with understanding about Kurg. What is Kurg? Kurg is known as a coffee country. Country here is to take, uh, taken as a countryside. Yes? So, uh, Kurg is a coffee country. That means a countryside which produces coffee over here. So, Kurg is a coffee country. It is known as coffee country because it uh, produces one of the finest co uh, coffee in India and not only that, it produces in quite a lot of quantity also. Famous for its rainforests and spices. Now, it is in the heart of Karnataka. And Karnataka, as we know, they are just besides the uh, mountain ranges, that is the west coast mountain ranges that are situated right from the top, that is near Maharashtra till Kerala. So, and 
in the southern areas there is more heat because the southern area is situated more near the equator and those are the areas which receive uh, quite a lot of heavy rainfall plus lots of heat is there humidity is there so warmth and humidity these two are the best for growth of vegetation vegetation will grow best where there is lots of warmth where there is lots of humidity and quite a lot of water that is rain so the forests in kerala karnataka malayala uh, that is sorry tamil there are many of them are rain forests because they receive uh, rain amounting to more than 200 centimeters per year so coffee Kurg is a coffee country famous for its rainforests and spices. We know all over the world people came to India even in the ancient times to buy uh, textile and mainly spices. This southern coast is famous for all types of spices that grow here and they might be available in lots of other countries but the best can be got only from india from these southern states so karnataka or kurg is very well famous for not only coffee but it is famous for its rainforest oh, and it is also famous for spices now midway between mysore and the coastal town of mangalore mysore erstwhile the capital of karnataka mysore was the hot seat Uh, of power in Karnataka Tipu Sultan ruled over here and he controlled all the uh, spices that grew in these areas and with the help of the French he was able to beat the Britishers many times so it has quite a long history so midway between Mysore and the coastal town of Mangalore sets a place of heaven that must have been drifted from the kingdom of God. It is so beautiful. Rolling hills. This land is of rolling hills. Rolling. Yes, continuously keeps on going up and down, up and down. Somewhere there is elevation, somewhere it goes slope. Right. So rolling hills, it's famous for its rolling hills and it's such a beautiful place. Nature at its best. It looks as if this place must have been in heaven and then must have drifted from heaven to over here so a person who goes there for the first time is maximized completely captured with the beauty of nature over there and plus being the rainforest now and then showers of rain continue and it looks beautiful whole of the forest it looks fresh and always neat and clean because of the rain that washes the forest continuously and the sloping hills and the rolling hills give quite a beauty and coffee is produced over here this land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men beautiful women and wild creatures because this is a forest so wild creatures are there but more important thing is kurg whole of that area is inhabited that means lived upon by martial men people warriors martial men people who are born to fight to war quite brave people courageous people they don't know anything called fear right so they are martial men they are born for fighting for warring so proud race of martial men beautiful women and wild creatures kurg or kodagu it is as it is said in the local language in english it becomes kurg the smallest district of karnataka it is the smallest district of karnataka and is home to evergreen forest that we discussed earlier spices and coffee plantations now we learnt about plantations in geography also plantation the uh plantation needs huge wide area small small farms that come ne chalega right so you need huge piece of land for plantation it's quite costly and uh, lots of maintenance and it needs lots of managerial skills 
and uh, trees especially which take time to grow but once they grow uh, once they mature and start giving fruits yeah a lifetime assets right so coffee plantations evergreen rainforest gurk is famous for gurk is famous for evergreen forest spices grow over there and coffee plantations are there evergreen rainforest cover 30% of this district evergreen forest are found in approximately 30% of this beautiful land it's a small district during the monsoon it pours enough to keep many visitors away yes that's the beauty of rolling hills of hills taking curves and rolls up and down up and down yes water just rushes from everywhere making it making it impossible to drive vehicles and vehicles can get stuck up in the water the water the road just disappears at many places and it rains so heavily that even if you are on a well firm ground then also the driving just becomes impossible you cannot see the curves in the hills yes the road that is curving you are not able to see that and it becomes quite difficult to uh, Uh, drive vehicles in such a area so visitors they keep away during the monsoon season because it gets quite rough it pours enough to keep pours enough means it rains enough to gear keep many visitors away the season of joy commences from september and continues till march commences starts from june yes first of june the monsoon arrives in kerala from there it advances upwards and then it comes to karnataka so approximately you can say by 10 or 15 days monsoon arrives in uh, at 15 uh, during the first week or second week of june monsoon arrives in karnataka and then it rains so heavily that people keep away outside people keep away from these areas whereas the localites they just know how to live over there in this uh, rainy days and they love it right the season of joy that means beauty of this place changes completely once the monsoon season ends and right from september so june july august these three months heavy rains are there then the rain slows down and from september onwards up till march we have a beautiful season where outsiders come and they enjoy the place next the weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for a good measure that means it is the requirement of that area and these are the areas which are quite near to the coast and showers keep on happening and, and that's good for the, some of the crops for example uh, mangoes of uh kerala and karnataka especially are quite famous and they need shahs also right on time to time they need shahs so shahs are good and they keep on coming the weather is perfect otherwise fe- uh, weather is perfect but sometimes shahs come in in good measure means in lots of quantity the air breeze of invigorating coffee Yes the smell of coffee cannot be missed when you passing you are near passing through kurg coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under the tree canopies in prime corners prime on good location yes uh, we must remember that uh, britishers were ruling india before that portuguese were there in karnataka goa all these places french were pres- french presence were also there so lots of these uh, european people when they uh, wanted vacation they made lots of hill stations in india lots of construction work uh, residential places where set up bungalows were made by the britishers french these colonizers yes to spend their vacation or leisurely time over here so you find beautiful bungalows in the made during the british or the french or the portuguese era in these areas and they are situated at prime location where you can see the beauty of the nature in front of you so that is the meaning three canopies 
coffee we have learned that in chapter number 10 social science that coffee grows under the shade of the tree yes it cannot bear the direct sunlight so you'll have lots and lots of trees where coffee is grown under it so the canopy canopy is the tree cover the cover of the leaves the branches that does not allow the sunlight to uh, penetrate and reach the ground so that forms a canopy the top cover right so lots of colonial bungalows stand tucked away beautifully made between the uh, tree canopies in prime locations the term coffee estate estate a huge property is called estate as these uh, coffee plantations they belong to someone right uh, the land belongs to someone whole of the property belongs to someone so it's a huge estate on which coffee is grown so estate is a huge property so coffee estates and colonial bungalows bungalows made during the colonial rule stand tucked away quite well hidden under the canopy of the trees in prime a very good location the fiercely independent people of Kurg are possibly of Greek or Arabic descent. Now, this is quite good. Uh, rest of the southern part, that is, say, Karnataka, uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, we have learned that in chapter number one, uh, that the Dravidians who were living in India since the Stone Age, and they were the creators of Mohenjo-Daro, uh, they had to forcefully shift to the southern part of India because of the uh, advent of the Aryans into their area and they were forced to move back to the southern part of India and they settled over there and uh, they have their own Dravidian family of language that is Kannada, Malayalam, Tamil, Tamil and Telugu. But the people living in Kurg, they have a different lineage. They have a diff they are from a different race. They are not Dravidians. So, the fiercely independent, that is why fiercely, they are quite aggressive. They are quite aggressive and they are quite fierce, dangerous, right? And when they are at war, of course, they have to be dangerous, right, to, for the enemies. But Otherwise, they are quite pleasant, good people, right? But they are quite fiercely independent. That means they strike away from the other uh, people in Karnataka, independent of Kurg. Their lineage is maybe Greek. Their ancestors may be Greek or they may be Arabic. It's not sure. Decent coming down from the ancestry. As one story goes, so we have some story related to why people of Kurg are different from the Karnataka people who are Dravidians. So there has to be, now why one area is occupied with uh, people who are not Dravidians or who are not even Indians, right? So, but they have been here since thousands of years, hundreds of years, so why that? So, as one story says, goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when return became impractical. We know about Alexander the Great. He started from Greece. So, one story is that these people might be Greeks, and we know Greeks, Alexander the Great, they were fierce warriors and they wanted to conquer whole of the world, right? Alexander, one of the youngest emperors, emperors of the uh, Greeks. He started his march from Greek and came up to India. Then, as the story goes, he sent scouts, a huge group in different parts of India to see the possibilities where uh, war can be fought, which areas can be conquered, which area has, of course, the attack, Alexander, uh, the great he attacked not only to conquer the world, but he also wanted to conquer the riches He had a huge army to feed right and to continue the war in different parts of the world but as we know the history also that Alexander the Great when he came to India and uh, when he started fighting with the local uh, rulers in North India then by the time the army got fed up that they had left their 
hometown or they had left Greek, uh, Greece quite long back. Now they were so many years fighting for Alexander the Great and the army people. Uh, the army was now fed up. It wanted to go back. The army wanted to go back. Many people said, now we are fed up of this fighting. Uh, so half of us are not even with us. They are already dead. Yes. And now children also have grown up and they won't even recognize their father. Being that's the time that has elapsed uh, when they left home and now. So half of his army was unwilling to keep on fighting or continue uh, conquering the rest of the parts of India. But Alexander the Ga uh, Great had sent lots of scouts, small, small parties, uh, small to say, but had quite a number. So he had sent uh, various divisions of his army into Indian uh, territories to uh, seek out the possibilities and prospects. One such party, as the story goes, might have landed up over here and then they lost the touch with Alexander because then Alexander started moving back towards Greece. So they lost the touch and now nowhere else to go. In those days we know communication was too hard, even the journey was too hard. Somebody goes and comes back with the news, just impossible, though they just gave up and settled in Kurgut. That is how the story goes. So one story goes, a part of Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled when their return became impractical or it was of no use. These people married amongst the locals and their culture is apparent in the martial traditions. Culture, they, although they settled over there, they mingled with the local people and they got married also and they had children also, but the culture is quite different from the local people and that is evident. Or evident means that can be proved. You can see it, it's a proof. Because of the uh, martial conditions, there are traditions. Whole of the tradition is warlike. Yes, that is quite far away or it's quite apart from the rest of the Dravidian people living uh, in other parts of Karnataka, right? So we can say that this race is quite different from the Dravidian race and it can be seen. Though they mingled with the lo locals, got married, had family and then they were living over here. But the fierce warring nature, martial traditions, they never go away. Marriage and religious rites which are distinct from Hindu mainstream. Now, because they come from Greece, they have their own culture, they have their own customs, traditions. Yes, we can see that that custom tradition, whether it is of marriage, whether it is of religious rites, everything is different, totally different from the main uh, Hindu mainstream. Yes, where the, even the local people might be uh, worshipping the Hinduism or following Hinduism, but their religion uh, or uh, marriage rights, all of that are quite different from the Hindu mainstream. The theory of Arab origin draws support from the long black coat with an embroidered waist belt worn by the Kodavos. Now, in the starting we learned that the origin might be Greek or it can be Arab. Now, Greek, we understood that uh, the Alexander the Great's um, party might have been left behind over here and they stayed and settled, right? That is one part of the story or one way of selling that they are Greek. Another says they are Arab people. It, why? Because now Greece and Arabian countries, they are quite far apart from each other distance wise. Yes, but we see over here the uh, way they wear the coat, that is embroidered black coat with embroidery, the long black coat with embroidered waist belt worn by the Kudavos. That is in similarity with the coat that is worn by the Arab people. So, known as Kupe, it resembles the Kufia worn by the Arabs and the Kurds. Kufia that is worn by the Arab and the Kurds. Now, this goes in line with the Arabs. But the way they fight, the way they have courage, the way they have those martial uh, ways to, uh, fierce martial ways to traditions, customs and traditions that tell that they are Greek. But the way they wear their clothes it tells us the origin might be Arab. Arab or the Kurds. 
Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers. Hospitality, they welcome the guest, right? They allow them to stay in their homes, have separate arrangement so that outside people can stay in their home, enjoy for say two days, week, whatever you are staying for and they have a great sense of hospitality and they serve you well, right? And in, during the evenings, nights, when whole of the uh, Kurgi family gets together along with the guests that they have who have come from outside, Kurgi people do not waste time and they continuously tell valor tales. Valor means of courage tradition of hospitality then they are more than willing to share numerous tales so tales of valor valor uh, bravery they will tell you tales about the bravery how their sons or how their fathers fought during the war the courage that they had and the brave show of saving their country or fighting for their country all those stories tales stories stories of bravery were told in a very interesting way by the family members the kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the indian army kurg regiment is a special regiment that allows uh, only the people of kurg to enter into the Kurg regiment and fight for the Indian army and the country and the Kurg regiment is one of the finest and it is very well decorated. Decorated means there are lots and lots of medals that are given to uh, the soldiers of Kurg regiment because of their bravery. So. When the number is tallied with other regiment, we can see that the Kurg regiment has more medals of bravery than other regiments. So it is more decorated in that way. So, and the very first chief of Indian army after we got independence, the very first chief of army staff, that is General Karyapa, he was a Kurgi. He came from the Kurg regiment and that tells us about the uh, bravery, the valor, the courage, the achievement that Kurki people can have. Even now, Kodavus are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without a license. Very, very important. Firearms, yes, those who fire, that is pistols, rifles, yes, all those things. In India, if you want to carry a firearm, you need to get a license from the government, right? Without a license from the government, you cannot carry a firearm that is a weapon that can fire. It is illegal and heavily penalized and it is a punishable offense. Carrying arms without, arms and ammunition without legally taking a license for it but in india kurg is the only area where carrying arms or having firearms without that is carrying weapons or having weapons without a license is allowed now how can it be it is because of the total control over themselves right that is the meaning that even when they carry weapons, even when they are fierce, they are warriors, but they have total control over themselves. They just are not trigger happy. They are not ready to kill people unnecessarily. Yes, that much faith the government has on them. And it is according to the customs and traditions that each and every household, each and every man, each and every woman should be able to or should be knowing how to use the weapons it is their custom it is the tradition and they don't overreact in situations and they don't lose control over themselves and uh, fight to kill 
just because they are angry they have control over themselves and that is why the government also trusts them and good people they are they do not need or they do not have a requirement of a license to carry or have arms firearms the river kaveri obtains its water from the hills and forests of kurg it's a high place so lots of rain falls over there in small small stream uh, lots of streams coming out from every nook and corner of the uh, uh, kurg area and flows down and all of them here and there they meet river kaveri and that is how kaveri gets a huge amount of water from the kurg area and the forests of the kurg mahasir a large fresh water fish abound in these waters in these small streams because streams when they are going from up and down up and down they form puddles and then uh, gathers water gathers at lots of places there a uh, variety of fish that is mahasir a large fresh water it's quite big around in these waters kingfishers dive for their catch yes kingfisher is one of the most beautifully and multicolored bird kingfisher yes it loves the wet fish and it dives for that catch because small small puddles are there ponds are there where the water gets collected again it overflows goes out as a stream outside so in these small small puddles and ponds you have lots of uh, mahasir uh, fish which is the favorite food of the kingfisher and the kingfishers they dive for their catch and the diving of the uh kingfisher for the fish we must have seen in lots of photograph that it's considered one of the best pictures where a kingfisher dives for the fish while squirrels and langurs drop partially eaten fruit for the mischief of enjoying splash and the ripple effect in the clear water well, as i said lots of ponds lots of uh, collect uh, water gets collected here and there and there are lots of trees hanging over there the squirrels and the langurs langurs are the monkeys right they eat the fruits and they drop that remaining part of the fruit uh, into that clear clean and still water and because of the falling of the fruit ripples happen so either for the splash or for the ripples they throw the fruits yeah elephants and squirrels as far as squirrels are concerned this is the area where we find the famous flying squirrel it doesn't actually fly but it has an extra skin attached from the front limb to the uh, hind limb and when they jump they spread their four legs and air gets collected in that skin and they can glide from one branch to another so the flying squirrels are found over here same way langurs lots and lots of them are fine elephants and many of the because karnataka is famous for first thing is sandalwood it's a huge forests of sandalwood and in these forests of sandalwood we have wild elephants right so karnataka kurg being part of karnataka you will find elephants over there elephant enjoy being bathed and scrubbed in the river by their mouths most of these animals elephants that you find over here they are trained they are tamed and trained and they are tamed especially to bring the uh, big logs of wood from the inside of the forest and carry them to the nearby road because all of that the uh, vehicles cannot go everywhere in the forest because of the hills so they have to wait some place clearing and the elephants with the help of the mouths they bring the uh, trunk of the tree that is the log big huge logs and they bring it out so elephants they enjoy that splash over there and because the air is clean water is clean and it's quite a beautiful sight to see an elephant being washed by the mahas and the elephant enjoying it the most laid back individuals become converts to the life of high energy adventure with river rafting the most laid back individuals youth looking quite idle but when once they are in kurg area and in those downstreams that are going fast yes river rafting is an adventure sport which is conducted over here and all of a sudden that lazy idle looking youth gets converted into high energy 
when they are adventuring with the river rafting. We must have seen that small uh, dinghy type of boat, flattened, inflated uh, boat, yes, in which uh, with paddles, two or three people, five people, they make a team and they river raft, go up and down the river. So you can see that canoeing, single piece, single seat boat, right? Uh, rappling, rock climbing, these are all the adventure sports that is done in this quite forested hilly area and with lots of rain, water and mountain biking because we uh, these are small small hills so you'll have small paths where you can uh, ride the boat uh, or ride the uh, bicycle and have lots of fun and mountain biking of course needs lots of energy so youth will always find over here doing all these adventure activities. Numerous walking trails in this region are favorite with trekkers, people who like to track, who walk, who like to walk uh, long distances on hills and uh, jungle places, right? So small, small trails are there because this is, uh, this is not a mountain, there are small, small rolling hills. So you'll have lots of paths made by the, way, uh, by the local people or made by the wild animals or made by these people who keep on tracking. So you'll find lovely paths over here, trails, trails just two feet, right? So walking trails in this region, they are favorite among the trackers who continue tracking in these areas. Then other wildlife that you see, birds, bees, butterflies, are there to give you lots of company, yes? Uh, Macacos, Malabar squirrels, langurs, slender loris keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy. So you find lots of wildlife over here and it's quite beautiful. I do, however, prefer to step aside from wild animals. For wild animals, the first thing is they don't like the sight of human beings, yes? and Human beings also, because wild elephants, they are always in quite a huge group, right? And it is best to keep away from that. Yes, step aside when you see wild elephant, let them go. And hat jodo, namaskar karo, ganpati ji ko, or jane do, right? If they get mad, you don't have any place to hide, right? The climb to the Brahmagiri hills bring you into panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of Kurg. You to climb up and down, up and down. So when you go up, you have a different scenario in front of you. You have a different landscape. When you come down, whole of the landscape fills in front of you. So the climb to the Brahmagiri hills, they bring you panoramic view because the hills, they keep on changing wherever you go and a different site is available every new second. So. It's quite huge, panoramic, panoramic going from one degree to another where your eyes can have to span out and you have to turn your head to take in the entire expanse of the uh, landscape that is in front of you. That's called panoramic. A walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island of Nisargandam, Nisargadama. 64 acre island of Nisargadama. Then a walk across rock uh, sorry, rope bridge, rope bridge, a bridge made out of rope and you have to catch and reach over the other side. Running into Buddhist monks from India's largest Tibetan settlement at nearby uh, Balakupi is a bonus. Uh, Tibetans, they had to run, uh, run away from Tibet, many of them ran away from Tibet when uh, China annexed it and uh, Many Buddhist people, many Buddhist monks, they ran away from there and took shelter in many parts of India. Same way, India's largest Tibetan settlement, it is near Bailakupe. It's a bonus. You can see lots of monks over there, lots of religious activities over there, all Buddhist people over there. So, you'll see in Nisardama. The monks, they have a special gear to wear. So red, ochre and yellow robes are amongst the many of the surprises that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for heart and soul of India right here in the Kurg. The mark. The monks they have a special wear right there it's either red or red and orange and ochre and these are the robes from top to bottom they are robes. Yes, the, it's their uh, traditional wear, yes? 
are amongst many surprises when you go over there you'll see lots of monks in uh, colorful dresses of orange yellow and ochre and the visitors they find themselves completely lost in a strange land as if they are not in india right they just entered uh, say tibet or the uh, place where the buddhist monks live over here so right here in the center of kurg we have the kurgi people and we have the buddhist people also living in these areas so students let us stop over here for today we'll continue in the next lecture thank you students